Bienvenidos to a new edition of the Spanish Real Estate Library TV. My name is Carlos Moreno, and I have a special guest with me, Langston Wine. How you doing, brother? It's good to see you. Nice to see my friend. So up. It's always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. Langston's job is very much helping people uh, to create financial freedom. He's a financial advisor. That's his job. But he has a particular way to do business, and I am very excited today because. I want to share with all of you uh, the way he do business. Uh, it's a couple of things that I noticed most on them, most on him, I'm sorry. And it's very much, uh, first of all, he has a mission and vision, not only for he and his business, but also for all his clients. Also, he has a plan for every individual. He sit down with clients and make a plan in a short and long term. And also, he has the mastermind concept. So he surrounds himself with people around him, professional people that, at the end, help the customers to create a bigger portfolio and build uh, well in different ways. So, with that being said, Langston, thanks for coming, my friend, again. Uh, now, tell me a little bit. Um, I know a little bit about your um, purpose in life. That's one of the things that uh, amazed me the most when I hear you talking about uh, this is my mission, this is why I want for people that I know, for my community, my clients. So tell us a little bit about that mission and vision. So uh, let me first say thank you, Carlos, for giving me an opportunity to uh, share a little bit about me and what I'm trying to do with uh, your following. Um, one of the things that is really most important to me one of the reasons I get out of bed in the morning is the idea of closing uh, the gap between the haves and have-nots in this country. And uh, the reality is the wealth gap is typically socioeconomic. You know, you look at uh, people of color, brown and black in this country versus their contemporaries, uh, and uh, there's, there's a huge, there's a canyon in between the net worth in, in, in New England and in Massachusetts the median net worth of black people is about $8, you know, and you look at their uh, white counterparts, it's a quarter of a million dollars. How does that happen? Yeah. You know, and how do we get here um, is the first step. The probably most important step after that is what do we do to change that circumstance? Yeah, exactly. and, and that's why I'm in the business that I'm in, because most of the time it's a matter of not having the access to the knowledge and the people who can implement that plan. But more than anything, it's typically not access to people like Carlos and people like myself who will sit down on a case-by-case -case basis and lay out a strategy um, for, uh, for individuals that are looking to change their financial circumstance. So that's very good. So your plan is very much, I know that you don't differentiate uh, the size of network. Uh, you can help people that are making only 50,000 a year. You can help somebody who's making 50, 000, million. 50 yeah. million, whenever. So uh, you have a plan for everyone in particular. Right. So uh, so that's very good. And you're right. I mean, the economic uh, of the country is changing and the rich are getting richer, the poor is getting poor. Yeah. And um, in my business, I always, uh, and I have to do, uh, run always the credit report for my clients and most of the time I see that big different people that has um, 20, 40 thousand dollars in debt, uh, there is people that have some businesses and there is money there that they don't really know how to manage the money. Oh my. So uh, what is the biggest problem that you see uh, with um, all people right now? I'm, I'm so glad you asked me that question Carlos because a lot of people um, they're treating the symptoms, right? So if, if you had a, a cold or a flu, uh, you, you would, you'd have a runny nose, sore throat, headache, et cetera. So now you're taking Tylenol, you're taking Advil, you're taking Robitussin, you're taking NyQuil, and you're taking all these things to treat different symptoms, but we never really ask, how'd you get sick in the first place, yeah, right? Exactly. So we're not asking, uh, how much stress are you under at your job? We're not asking, what kind of diet are you on? Are you getting enough rest? Are you dressing appropriately for the season? We don't get into that. That's the reason why people continue to get sick. And from an economic standpoint, it's the reason why people can't seem to escape the rat race because we're, okay, my credit is down. Let me pay some debt. Now you've paid some debt down with the money that you were able to save 
Now you don't have savings anymore, so your car breaks down. So mm -hmm. what do you do? Now you have to borrow money because you just invested all the money that you were saving in order to improve your credit. Now your credit is going to take a hit because now you don't have the financial resources and reserves to pay your bills. So it's kind of a borrow from Peter to pay Paul. The problem really isn't that your credit is bad. The problem isn't that you don't no, have savings. The problem isn't that your car broke down. The problem is that you didn't have a strategy to meet all of these needs before the circumstance presented itself where you needed the money to pay down some debt or repair the car. You have to have a strategy well in advance if you want to sustain long-term financial growth. And, and if your financials are, are where you want them to be, you have a cash flow, you have a way of capturing income and putting it into the designated buckets that allow you to access it for various different things in your life, your credit's gonna be good as a derivative of having a good financial plan. You know, so more than anything is having a sound strategy and, and everything else will fall into place. Yeah, so I'm, I completely agree with you. So now, um, I always talk to people about a budget. Mm -hmm. One of the first things that we talk when we do first time budget seminars, when we go, when you go to the bank is incentivate people about talking about the budget. But it's very uh, stressful in a surgery that people don't like it very much. So how people change that concept, that mind, and even you don't like to sit down and watch your numbers is something that you have to do. Some people sometimes get so stressed about it that it's, they don't even want to see the bills that come. In. So how we can change the main concept in a simple way with clients? So, uh, one of the things I tell all my clients to do is, and, and I hope this answers your question, yeah. is pay yourself first. Okay. Right? We have a tendency when we, we get any kind of money, mm -hmm. um, the first thing we want to do is pay our creditors, right? And I'm not saying that you shouldn't be paying your creditors, but the first person, the most important bill that you should be paying every month or every week when you get paid is you, right? Because if you're not putting money aside for yourself, for your own savings, uh, for other things that you can't really plan for, when those unexpected events happen, it'll throw your world into a tailspin, right? Mm -hmm. So if every month, let's say you have a $3,000 credit bill, you get your tax refund, and you spend $3,000 paying down your debt, you have no savings, right? Mm -hmm. And let's say you only got $2,000 from your tax refund, and you have a $3,000 debt, and you throw all the money at that bill, what happens? The next month, your creditor is going to call you and they're not going to say, man, Carlos, thank you so much for giving me that $2,000. Take the next month off. Yeah. They're going to say, if we don't get our minimum payment next month, we're going to report you to the credit uh, reporting agencies. And you're right back where you started. Now, imagine if you only paid the minimum, right? You still had $2,000 over here and you could pay them every month your credit is going to improve as a derivative and then you've got some savings. Maybe you pay over the minimum, but it's about having a plan. And that plan should always involve paying yourself first. That's one of the biggies. Yeah, you got it. And um, talking about the plan. So you usually you sit down with your clients mm -hmm. and you create a plan. I know that you go like a backward. You start oh, yeah. four, five years, two years in backward. And is something that people come with you and say, I want to do this, and you listen to them and you implement that, or you ask the questions and uh, help people to understand that there is other ways to do those different things. How do you start building that plan with each client? So, um, I, I take a lot of pride in my process. Mm -hmm. um, I know a lot of other financial advisors that do things differently, infinitely more transactional. Not everybody's going to be ready to jump in with both feet and start investing and saving and budgeting and doing all these things, but I, I guarantee you nothing is going to happen if you don't know why you're budgeting, you don't know why you're saving, you don't have a, a reason to take different action than you were taking previously. So I, I, I like to say that goals are the cornerstone of every financial plan because those goals and being passionate about what your goals are is what's going to power you through those months when, oh man, so you know, you mean to tell me that if I upgrade to platinum, I get all these perks? <sighs> Wait, no, I have to pay myself first. It's going to talk you off the ledge of spending money that should be saved because you're thinking, oh, I, 
I'm trying to buy a house or, oh wait, uh, I'm trying to retire in 10 years or, you know, I, I, one of my main goals was improving my credit so it's important that you'll just behave differently. So I always start my process with what your goals are. And, and in that, it's really important to understand what motivates someone, you know? Exactly, yeah. Like, how, what's your relationship with money? Do you always feel like money is a, is a resource that you can't get enough of? Is, is money to you a tool? You know, are you looking at money as something that allows you to get access to other things? What is your relationship with money and how do you see it? Because sometimes people have an unhealthy relationship with money and how it's used. I had a, a good friend and client who was terrified about debt. Oh, wow. So much so that they'd rather pay debt than save money for retirement. Mm. So imagine if somebody spent their entire life worried more about paying debt than saving. Exactly. They have no debts. They enter into retirement with no money. And the only way they can survive is by borrowing and, and living below the standard mm -hmm. that they've been accustomed to their whole life. You're absolutely right. And, uh, and somehow you answered part of my, what's my next question is, uh, when you create a plan, you have a process, how do you keep them motivated to keep doing what they're supposed to do? Because it's the basic, the most basic things that they have to do every week, every month. How do you keep that, your clients, that people motivated to do that? So I, I borrowed this term <laughs> from a friend of mine. Yeah. And uh, he refers to himself as the dream whisperer. Okay. And I like to think of myself as a dream whisperer as well. Maybe a better dream whisperer than the person who coined the term. And, and I'll elaborate on that. Part of my job is capturing all of your, your dreams, goals, and aspirations and keeping them in a place where we date them, we revisit them, and we look at the progress that we've made moving towards those goals. One of the things I do is a SWOT analysis, right? Uh -huh. You hear a lot of Fortune 500 companies go over what are my strengths, what are my weaknesses, what are the opportunities, what are the threats for my business, but we don't do that on a personal level. So one of the things I do with my clients is I say, hey, listen, uh, what is your greatest strength yeah. with regards to accomplishing your financial goals? And they'll say, I'm determined, I'm passionate, I'm inspired, I'm ready to go do it, you know? Or sometimes I'll say, I have a lot of money, you know, I'm gonna inherit a lot of money, whatever that is, we keep track of that and we revisit it and we make sure we turn that strength into the machine, the motor that powers you month after month, year after year, decade after decade towards financial growth, freedom, and, uh, and ultimately achieving those goals that you said. Good, that's pretty good stuff. Um, another question uh, that uh, I'm very, uh, very excited about it is the, the mastermind concept. Uh, I am a guy that always, uh, I don't want to be the smartest guy in the room. Uh, mm -hmm. I like to be surrounded with the smarter people. That's why I called you absolute. So, <laughs> and so I, think, I think you dialed the wrong number. <laughs> it didn't want to make me feel bad. That's what happened. <laughs> no, no, no. It's great. So um, one of the hard moments uh, the other day when uh, we meet together with a client of you and you just right here in this room, you start making the numbers and you create that plan and put all of us together in one room. I think that's amazing. Uh, so how do you manage to build all these uh, pool of professionals around you? And, and how, how that is affected in your normal clients every day? So this, that's a great question. Man, he's <clears throat> with the good questions. So that, that has a lot less to do with what I do for a living okay. and more to do with how I like to live my life, right? So a lot of, it, and, it, and it's interesting, a lot of professionals define themselves by the profession, right? So a lot of um, financial services professionals like myself introduce themselves as, hi, I work for this company, or hi, I'm, I do this, and this is what I do, and I sell this. You have to be a person first. You were who you were long before you got into the business. Yeah. So it's how you interact with people. And I am big on social equity. I always invest in the people in my universe. And, and just like you, Carlos, I, I, I'm always thinking, how can I help Carlos get to where he's going? And if you make a habit of that, uh, what ends up happening is you find yourself surrounded by people who are interested in helping you accomplish your goals. And my primary goal is making my clients successful. So then I get an army of people who I've invested in their businesses 
chomping at the bit to help my clients mm -hmm. go from point A to point B. So that leads very naturally into a mastermind, right? Exactly. And, a, and a mastermind, if you don't mind, was a term coined by Napoleon Hill. You're right, yeah. He wrote Think and Grow Rich, great book, and The Law of Success, two of his more famous works, yeah. in which he said, when you get a group of two or more people in a room, you can leverage their, their insight and knowledge and experience to get an infinitely greater return. So it, the sum of the parts are not as great as the whole, if you will. I, I hope I'm yeah. saying that right. But, you better, yeah. But, we um, get the message, so that's good. We, we get the message, you get the point. And so when my clients get together and they tell me I want to be wealthy and I want to use real estate as a means of taking my net worth from where it is today, sometimes negative, a lot of times it's actually negative because our debts usually up exceed our assets. Um, but they say, I want to be wealthy, I want to buy real estate, I need uh, an agent, I need a, a broker, I need to, I, whoa, 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 slow down, right? I slow down and say, listen, I'm going to put you in a room with all the people you need to be successful. And that might be a CPA, you might need an accountant to get your, your books together, uh, get your taxes together, you'll probably need this guy, because he's the best broker this side of the Mississippi, yeah. probably on both sides of the Mississippi, <laughs> I don't want to sell you short. And you're gonna need people who are professionals in other areas of expertise than I have to offer. So probably one of the greatest assets, not to, to sell, short sell myself, but I think one of my greatest assets is having access to other experts. And if I can bring those other experts in the room with my clients, I've empowered them in a way that I couldn't have done by myself because I just gave them a team. Yeah. Instead of just getting one person, I. Working with, with me, I work to build you a team of people that you like that will help further your goals so that if you need something that I can't provide, you got it. Yeah. You know, right there at your fingertips. Pastor, let me ask you this question. Um, at what age people should stop dreaming? Stop dreaming? I think that's, I think you should never stop dreaming, right? I, I was afraid that you were going to say a certain uh, age, you know. So that's how old is Carlos? <laughs> yeah, stop. No. Ooh, ooh, okay, no, that's great. No, no, no. Yeah. Honestly, um, I think your dreams uh, may evolve. Yeah. You know, you when you were younger, you you know, I'll tell you, I, I, you know, I, this is the first time I really opened up about this. But when I was younger, I wanted to be a dinosaur, right? <laughs> I saw yeah. Jurassic Park. I was like, I'm going to be a T Rex when I grew up. And my dad, uh, in only the way he could, pulled me off to the side and said, Mike, send you, that's off the table. So I, at an early age, the ceiling was set of <laughs> yeah, what yeah, I could be. Yeah, but yeah. he said, you know what you could be? You could be a paleontologist. Yeah. And that just goes to show the maturity and refinement of your dreams. Mm -hmm. So I don't think you should ever stop dreaming, but I think we should refine the parameters of our dreams and, and dream in a way that comes with a manual of how to achieve that dream. Dream responsibly okay you know so people who are let's see uh, getting to almost close to retirement mm. and they know probably is not going to be nice and easy retirement they get together with you how you can help that type of people that may have some money outside may have other plans they still have that energy to do a couple of things, they want to take some risks probably, maybe real estate. How can we help the people to get whenever, where they are to whenever they're going to be? Mm -hmm. So uh, there is a time horizon on accomplishing things okay. because the, the uh, closer you get to retirement, typically the less time you have and the less risk you want to take in order to accomplish your goal. Yes. You know, So if you've saved your whole life you've got a million dollars of assets, the last thing you want to do is put them into an environment where all of your assets could be lost very quickly. Mm -hmm. The best thing you probably could do, if you're dreaming, is surround yourself with people who protect your dreams. Okay. People who believe in your dreams and are prepared to put together a plan to help you achieve your dreams. So that kind of goes back to a mastermind. I, I find that a lot of my clients and, and, and people in general, right? They take their dreams and they, they're so worried about their dreams being damaged or being afraid of opening up about their dreams to people who will, will squash their dreams and tell them to get real, that's unrealistic. So they take their dreams and they, they hide them so that they're safe, right? What I think needs to happen is we need to put these dreams out in the forefront and surround them with other people who are interested in protecting and helping you develop your dream so then you can realize it because it's very difficult 
to do anything by yourself, particularly when you're doing it in secret. Yes, you I know, do. this is my secret dream, and, and, and it never really comes out to the forefront. There's an African proverb that says that uh, if you want to go fast, go by yourself. If you want to go far, go with a group. Yes, and the last thing you want to do is quickly run out of money in retirement. Yeah. So get your group together and make sure that your money goes far um, and hopefully far beyond you and becomes generational wealth for your children and your children's children. That's pretty wise advice. Uh, now, what would be the typical advice that you will give to they are probably some professionals they are who are going to listen to that video, watching this video, and real estate agents, people that don't get any type of check every week, every month, they very much have to make their own uh, business. What type of advice you will give to that people and how they can get in contact with you? That's, that's, uh, that's the biggest, uh, I think the biggest need for financial advice and financial direction is in the field of individuals who work on a commission, their income isn't steady, it's not necessarily predictable. They are, are really the probably most at risk of financial ruin um, because um, money is a tool more, more than anything else, you know. And um, if you're working on commission and you run out of money, you just lost your most valuable tool. That means you can't put money in your car to get to your meeting. That means that you can't pay the car note, you can't pay the, the insurance on the car, you can't pay your mortgage, you can't take your clients out to lunch. That plan that you have as a commission-based employee is, is hyper critical to your success and longevity because you might be one deal away from breaking through. Exactly. Right? You might, the next client that calls could be the deal that makes your career, but if you don't have the financial resources because you didn't have a financial plan for that last commission payment that you got and you run out of money, you can't get to that appointment mm -hmm. or you can't be focused on closing that deal because you're focused on paying the bills next week, it just creates a doom loop uh, for people that work in those fields. So what I would say, and I tell all my clients this, when we get together, leave your checkbook at home, let me see if I can help you. Let's get together, let's build a team around you, and let's count the money later. Let's make the money first and figure out how we can make you as successful as possible. But uh, that said, escaping that doom loop and having a strategy for every commission payment from the first commission payment you make next week to uh, next year's huge commission payment when you, you know, if you're real estate, you. You close on that uh, 21 condominium deal over there in, uh, in Roxbury or, or you, you build a uh, ground up construction project, you get the contract, you, you, you win the bid and they cut you the first 50% uh, of the job. What is your, you have to have a plan before you get that money yeah. because life comes at you so fast, you know, yeah. that before you know it, the money's gone and you don't have the resources to buy the materials to finish the job. You know, if you're a contractor or if uh, you're a real estate agent or a life insurance agent or whatever it is you're doing, uh, it, it could really end uh, your career in that field quick, fast, and in a hurry. You're right, yeah, absolutely. So, uh, Greg, I mean, has been uh, great information. Unfortunately, we don't have too much time to extend this video, but um, one of my Quotes, the biggest quote that I have with one of my mentors, Jim Rohn, is um, the greatest values we have is not what we get. The greatest value we have in life is what we become. Mm -hmm. And we can become a better person. We can become uh, wealthy. We can, and when we become wealthy, we can do better things with the money, with family, friends, society. So you are a very important part of that piece of life. And I just want to thank you very much for great advice. Tell us where we can get in contact with you. You want to give us a, a website, a phone number, or an email. Where we can, yeah. somebody can call you. Yeah, email. I'm, I'm going to uh, have uh, Carlos, I'm going to give him some homework. Put the phone number, boom, right there on yeah, the okay. screen. Okay, very good. And uh, you can, you know, I tell all my clients to call me on my direct line because, uh, you know, we live in a very dynamic reality. 
and people are always uh, experiencing different financial circumstances in which uh, working with a financial services professional could be the difference between great success and something that you may regret in the future. So dial me anytime, shoot me an email, um, and I'd be happy to work with anybody out there. So ha have a great day, and thank you so much, thank Carlos, you, for having me. Thank you, my friend. Thanks for coming. Thank you, everybody. And make it a great day. Make it a great life. Thank you.